Okay, so a, a quick summary of where we've got to in our look at Golgi Shio, comparing both show and die, accepting that different people use different labels for them. They both start the same. So the essential idea is you're pushing a limb out of the way to get a strike in over the top. How you get there in actual fight doesn't matter, right? You just the fact is you've cleared a path and then you've got your strike coming down over the top. As we talked about, if you're unlucky or he's really good, you might be able to get that other arm up quick. When he does get that arm up bit quick, it's not a problem, you just repeat the same movement, okay, which would then leave you on the other side. So that movement can be used to clear either arm. Following that, you've got different things depending on which version of the cut that you, you, you've got you, here or here. We're looking at Shou Dai and Goji Shi or Shitori do. Uh, if you're on this side. So if I cleared this way and you hadn't blocked, right, the next thing he's going to do, of course, is he's going to try and correct his line. He's going to move around and smack me with that back hand. So I need some methods to stop him correcting that line. One method is I move here and take hold of his, his, uh, his uh, shoulder and elbow. If he's pushing towards me at this point, I would be more in the back stance position, making myself nice and stable to absorb that force. If he's not, I still want that tension here, so I'm on a drive forward, which would be more like the other version. If Terrell tries to spin around and hit me that way, for this moment he can't. I'm not going to stay here for long, but for this moment he can't. What he could do is spin around in the opposite direction, but of course when he does that, I'm going to feel it and I can pre prepare for that. If I mess it up, because everything can go wrong, so I'll move to the side from there, fumble the grip from there. One of the things I can also do is this. 45 degrees again, take hold of the wrist, push on the head, and again, as before, he won't be able to turn with that backhand for that, that split second. So that's two at one angle. If you block with the other arm, as we talked about, from there, then this would be the angle that I'd be looking to move this way. Because this is the arm under control with either one of those two methods, right? So the cutter just shows it on both sides, depending on which way you go. So ease of clarity I'll show you here. Once you've got either the here or here, and then unloading with the shots. As we talked about, as you do these hits here, try and keep some awareness of the arm. Don't have the hiccatabe in eye. Because as soon as you let go of this, he closes it and you're not going to land any more shots. So as you throw your shots from here, you want this arm up. Having done that, you know, if you manage to get the other arm up, or you're trying to turtles down a little bit, the head is no longer a viable target. So at that point, I'm going to kick the legs here. If I kick the lead leg and he's, no, no, that's fine. If I kick the lead leg and his leg buckles, as I go in from there, he's probably going to fall in towards me, which is why the version dropping back with the gaku would be most appropriate. Again, if I move the side, I've gone back down from here. If you had the other foot forward, I kick the fire leg, he's going to fall away from me, so the version with the oizuki would be most appropriate, depending on which one. Either way, when I've ended up in either that position or that position, if he buries his head, so kind of shrugs his shoulder out a little bit, tucks his chin in against his chest, falls, yeah, there you go. I I've no longer got a really good target. So, depending on which way he's going, depends on which way I'd step. Because you see, some, one version goes forward, one version goes back. But I'm gonna, from there I realise there's no viable target, so I'm going to this arm and step in from here. So I'm going to catch him with the rising uh, elbow strike, being that sequence. Again, if he was coming forwards, as you know, like what you may be doing, you might be trying to get offline, that kind of thing. As he goes and does that one, then as he does that, I'm going to be stepping back as I do it. If he was trying to move away from me going that way, then I'm going to be stepping forward. So each cut that shows different versions. We then looked at the initial turn for this part. As we talked about, if you're doing it from the elbow and you start swinging shots with that other hand from there and block it, this could be one of the options. So gaining control of this limit, limit in some way, putting this hand on the back of the neck. What I'm then doing is I'm pushing this arm up and around as I'm grabbing the back of his head and pushing him through. If you feel resistance here, you need to the groin will often get it to bend the way you want it to. It's not in the counter, but it's free and it works. Right, you then step round with your back foot, push this head through, I'll show you from inside in a second too, and you push this arm through and around, which will take you to that position there. I love how you do that, it's great. I'm so impressed, let's see from this side as well, if that's alright. You can also, we talked about how you can do it from the outside as well as a singular technique, so you up there, what you want from here, push through and bring you around. Finish off however you like, get out of there. If it fails, do it like this way, which again gives everything can. I go from there, I start pulling and he steps right round off it. So that, that's how it goes. As he at this point I'm still dominant, but as he starts to get his head up, I'm now worried about getting smashed with that back arm. So I pull this arm across. Right, I pulled it down there more than I should have done. That's it. So pull it across. I'm then going to slam my hand against the side of his head. I'm not trying to poke this little eye because it's so mobile. So I'll slam my hand against it, and from there I'll get my thumb into his eye. So if we talk about those three, I'm looking to grab the back of the jaw, really. That one's sitting idle. It's a thumb that's doing the, the important bit. If he goes to protect his eye from there, again, he's going to bring that arm up. Well, this is when you've got this bit here before I move in with both. You've then got pushing whichever the eye is forward. 
because his head turns, if you, the pressure's lost on this one, then you apply the pressure to that one. Right? So you know, either way, you're driving his head downwards. If I can, well I've got that, if I can hook a leg, hook a leg, hook a leg, or hook a leg, I might get the throw from there. Okay, depending on which leg he's got forwards, and I can vary the side the pattern is appropriate. If that fails, so I've got that hip and I've got both arms on, and you know, I haven't managed to hook the leg or it's stepped off like that, I've then got the option to take hold of the head and chin, because the neck will be quite pliable by now, hopefully, stepping around and driving down here. And if that fails, we'll look at that after we've had something to eat. Everyone ready? Okay, so it's a summary of the second session. So we've got to the eye gauze bits and we're looking at this part here, right? So you've got this spin as the arms come down from there. So the essential idea of having gouged the eyes and loosened things up that little bit, take hold of the chin and the back of the head, stepping round with the back foot to try and take him over down to here. It's a nice simple takedown, right? Uh, if he manages to get ahead of you, so as he's got to do that from there, he's, he's spin round, he's got to here, rather than continue to spin, the thing I've got to walk him this way, which again, like the cutter does, which again will keep his posture disrupted. He can't get his centre of gravity back inside his base, he falls over. If that doesn't work, because you always need a plan B, C and D, right? As I go from there, as I start moving sideways, if he follows me, then I'm gonna, from there, disrupt his posture, either with a knee to the spine, or a crescent kick to the back of your knee, depending on which one you've got. And if we're looking at this one, whichever one you label it as, I'll use this arm to kick that arm out of the way, in case it comes up, and I'll strike down with the other one to drive him down towards the ground to finish. When we look at show or die, depending on what you call it, we look at this bit first, and we said you've got the idea of moving here and striking in, and then the back stance is the weight coming back here. So you've got oh, bringing his head into this position. Uh, if he stays low, I've got the stuff you know, you've already got earlier in the cabin. But if I feel him starting to move, if I want to do a neck crank, there's two ways, main ways he'll protect it. One is he brings his arm up, and then I struggle to get my hand in. Or the other one is, it's just hard to get my hand in round here. So I need to get this arm away and create some space, so bang. Right, so realise now he's going that way, you see, Ooh, here. So this arm is over on this side. That gives me the head, so then I'm going to step past his leg, pull with one, push with the other, and hopefully that'll crack his neck and take him down. If, during that point, so I'm going through, if he gets up with one arm and manages to knock it off his chin, that's how he protects himself. So I pull this arm back. If I just do this, he's likely to move with it. Right, and it'll still remain blocked. So I go there, that's a, and then I'm back. I move it across. If he does it with the other one, again, same again, boom, I'm back to here. If it's still not working, I'll do the same as I did before. I set around with that back foot. Hopefully that takes him down. If it doesn't, I'll walk him out. Hopefully that takes him down. If it doesn't, I'm going to get there from there, grabbing the hair at the back of the head, seizing the throat, and I'm going to bring him down to this position here. Some of you asked about if he lands on your thigh, if he does, it's great, because it's like playing the drums after that. Nice, easy finish. Uh, we then moved on there, there was a low strike for you after that, wasn't it? So from this position here, when you've got the one that uh, goes uh, here and then here, basic idea, I've got control of this arm, slow the water to and that brings his head forward. If he's fairly close, you might have to do a switch step. Don't bring the arm straight up because his head's going to be in the way. Take the arm to the side just like the cutter kind of has you do and then bring it round and down to here. If he skips back from the shot, which is, then you'd be doing exactly like the cutter kind of does it, you'd be stepping in. The other version shows an alternate way of doing that, working on this rock of the body. So if you hit above this line, he's going to lean back. So you've got to shoot over and he leans back from there. So you're putting the hand on the chin, stepping past the foot and continue to disrupt the posture to take him down from there. Usual thing, hit and move. We then have a look at this bit and said so from there, if I've gone from here to here, or whatever really, but if he throws a shot from there, I'm moving in to kind of stop it. You know, I'm definitely moving forward, hooking that arm, trying to catch it in here. So the hand formation isn't that important, it's just that you've got all five fingers on the other side of his arm from there. Again, in a split second, he's going to pull that free and start smashing you with stuff again. So I'll go one, two, down, up. Right, so you see how my arm snakes around like the cat does. Then I've got that arm, now we're in a grapple. But at least I don't have to worry about hitting that arm hitting me for now. And then we'll look at the throws, headbutts, neck cranks and stuff that the cutters do from that position in the final session. Is that okay? But where we finished off with was we'd wrapped that arm up from here with those two, hadn't we? And we're saying, you're, yeah, you're in this kind of close position here. You've then got the kick, so we'd be grappling around from there. If this leg is forwards, one of the things I can do is I can kick that leg so it moves backwards. 
Once it moves backwards from there, I can step in on this side, pull round and up with this arm, as this one comes across the chest, so I bring him over here. Usual thing, give him a hit and move away, right? So the way that would you know, work in reality is you've got that kind of bang and that wrap, you can move around from here, bang, bang, and use it, step in. From there, again, if need be, pull him around from there, I've got my finish and I move away. So a basic kind of winding style throw. Uh, for the next sequence we looked at, we've been saying about, you know, earlier you do the shoot hole and then the push. So if I've gotten to this position and I've pushed, but he starts to stagger off away from it. So he ends up, you know, he's, he's now effectively back on line from there. The other version of a, a similar sequence is I'm going to underhook this arm, pull through from here, strike on this side to bring his head forward. If I don't strike, it's hard to reach his chin. You need to use that as a, as a hit. I'm going to pull that round and I'm already starting to get his back. If his leg comes round like that, which he often does, you can just kick it straight out and that will often be enough to take him over. If he moves it when you kick it, or he didn't move it at all on the first crank, so do the not move it version for now, so you end up here, you can go to the next part of the move, no leg to kick, so there's no need to kick it. I'm going to grab something, hair, gee, whatever I want, and I'm going to pull this direction, so I'm pulling him straight along this line. As I go to do that, I punch to help him over the way. And then I move away. The stance helps ensure I get the weight transfer. From this side, so I'm going to go from there, hit, rip. If there's a leg, I'll kick it. If there isn't, then I won't. From there, if this isn't working and he's starting to correct from here, I'm going to reach over and take hold of this arm from this position. And as he does that, I'm going to turn, so I'm barring across my chest, and bang, I'm going to strike him in the groin from there. His hips were this way. As you put the arm bar on, he often turns, gives you the strike, uh, the strike to, to hit him with. We, did, we also looked at the two other follow-ups from this when you compare the two cutters, right? The bit that's later on there. So we've done the hit and we've done the throat grab. Uh, one of the ones we've got, I'll do the full thing so everyone's got it. If I'm turning around this way, he's managed to stay upright, I've moved him across, I've done the technique here, None, it's not working, I feel him starting to correct. I'll push this arm on his head as I pull this arm out of the way, trying to keep him upright for now. <laughs> so we end up there. The next thing the cutter does from there is bang. Right, so you've got this one and two. So I feel him starting to come up, so I'll go back to impact him. Uh, if, look at the other version, same thing, you know, from, from this position, hasn't quite worked. One of the options I've got if I feel him doing this is to just put my body weight in the way to stop it. I've then got loads of striking options. As we talked about, he can theoretically hit me with that arm, but this one's more likely. He throws his wild shots up this way. If he does, you just stick your arm out. So it's the same as I can. And then again, finish however you like, move away. Uh, what do we do next? Oh yeah, this bit. So if I've got this bit here, pushing the arm down, straightening down, stepping back. When I do that step, I'm making sure that I use the body weight to pull that arm out of the way. So if he's quite strong and he tenses his bicep up, again, this, the step back, will give me the room to get that one through. Then get some kind of grab or feel, so I've got some awareness of where it is. I step through and smash, maybe a couple of times. The cutter then has the options of either, if you turn this way, people might see it better, that's it. He's got the options of either pulling him away or moving him in. So when I step in from there, if he starts to correct his line, I can move in here. So I've got my hands gripped here, and I'll put my forearm across his shoulders from there. So for this moment, he's not going to be able to get a shot in because my arms are above his arms. I'm then going to, as he tries to do his arm, I'm going to, I'm going to head butt to an angle, if that's all right again. I'm going to go and bang, I'm going to drive my head through. So in practice, if I want to do it quick, I'm going to aim to miss, because headbutts are hard to control. Right, but it's here, bang, that's what I'm looking for. When I've got that, I'll turn back this position, and then I'm going to take hold of his head again, and I'm going to turn and crank him round, which will give you this. He may drop at that point if he does happy days. If he doesn't, if he starts to fail and he's coming to there, I'm going to, if the arms come into play, I'm going to get those arms out of the way. If they don't come into play, then it's not a problem. We'll assume they do. Arms are going and from there, again back to this position, both thumbs into his eyes from there, driving forward to so take him back and create space. If we're looking at the other version, I've got the hammer fist again, step through, uh, uh, through punch from here like I had before. Instead of being here to avoid being hit, I do this. Right, so I'm driving back. So if he's swinging shots into me from there, it's there. Because now at that point, you know, I, it, I'm at the tail end of the shot. Don't stay here for long though, I take his arms out of the way, bang again, hit him with another headbutt. I'm then going to wrap those arms, which gives you the hands on the hips position. If I had my head on this side, this would be the arm I'd play with. If I had my head on this side, this would be the arm I'd play with. And you see, in the tutorial version, they turn both ways to show you that. They don't do it in the short cam on the short on one side. Not that it matters. So what I'm then doing is, my, uh, uh, I think you might have to do that again. my arm is already wrapped above his elbow. 
Right, when I'm in that position here. So then I'm doing, I'm stepping away, turning, so that again, keeping this arm close to my body from there as I do this here. So it suddenly gets that arm pop again. As we talked about, it's a really nice technique that. You know, because it just sets you up for all kinds of things. It's great for me. But, but, but we're assuming that we span all the way around from here. Again, if the arms come into play, I get rid of them, and then this version, I'm striking forwards with both. I get bang to give myself space in order to escape. And then the counter just finishes off by bookending it with, you know, the signature moves that we've already kind of looked at. Pad drills, example pad drills for go to shield, show and die, kind of intermix a little bit. So starting at the beginning on both of them, they've got this, so we'll do that one way stand in front of me for that one, that's it. So he's got one pad in front of it representing the arm that we've got to clear, he's got this pad here. Ideally I'd be clearing at the elbow to strike his head, because everything's shifted across a little bit, because I don't want the pads directly in front of his head for obvious reasons, I'll kind of touch towards the middle of the arm. And moving in there, I've got this striking option from here. You could then move off and grab here, it's the same, but we were doing it as a push. So your partner holds the pad at 45 degrees as you move away and you put the pad on the hand to locate the, uh, the target. Uh, I then hit it with the two shots, bang, bang. Now I would be kicking the legs as we talked about yesterday, but the partner's going to hold the pad down there for a groin kick, because front kick against these pads just doesn't work very well, but at least you've got some kick. He then has the options of dropping it there, in which case I drop forwards, like whichever one you label show or die as one of them does. Or he can turn towards me and bring the pad in that little bit and I can drop back and hit it with a gacket. For the sake of argument, to keep it clean, we'll keep going forwards on this one. Once I've done that, he brings the pads into this position here. <coughs> At that point he can move away or forwards, but if he's where he is now, then I'll be stepping back and hitting him. Uh, in, in, um, in, in other styles, they have the feet in the way, so it doesn't really matter which way you do this for the rising elbow strike. If we're doing this version, the next thing I'm going to do from there is grab it towards the, the, the arm here, so the thumb and the index finger on the inside, this arm's on the back of the head, turn 180 degrees as I swing his head around and flip him. To around the lamp, put the pad again well away from his face, slightly above, and then I can do the finishing strike and move away. Right. So that was one option. We also said if that fails, so you're doing the pad drill and you go here and he moves round from this position, you've got the option there of pulling this arm across, he puts the pad up and I've got the uh, eye gouges we talked about. As some of you said, you can maybe bring the arm up and practice it again, but you know, it's just as easy to go to here. I would be reaping his rear leg for the sake of the drill, I'll just go here, he'll kindly sit down, and then I've got the strike and strike to finish uh, from that position, stop and strike to finish. Uh, if I want to look at this version of it, it'll start in exactly the same way. So you've got one from here, moving across two, three, four, five, six, he then gives me the elbow strike from there, bang to here, keep his hand on so you've got some feeling of like a Hikate style action. I'll then reach and grab his head and pull him in. If I want to practice a little bit of impact there, I can get him to put the pad there, fine, as I bring this through. I'll then take hold of the real head, and remembering it is a real head, do the crank. He's not pushing the arm off, because it's difficult on the pad, so I don't need that bit. I'll then step round and turn this way, so I'm falling into there. I'll then step round and take him down on the first example we did. He then puts a pad in position again, I've got to a finishing strike and a move. If he manages to stay on his feet, or for the sake of the drill, I keep him on his feet, so we've got from there, that's it. He'll walk round from there, I've walked him across a little bit. I can put the knee in, but that's obviously a real knee. I'm going to gather this arm up as I put my hand on the pad, and then from there I've got the impact. It's hard to hold for that one, there's no need to hold for this one, and there's no need to hold for that one. So that one lends itself particularly nicely to it, right? Um, <coughs> the next bit we looked at was, uh, was this sequence. So on this one we've got to hold slightly differently because we know what's coming next. So Terrell's just moved slightly off the line, I can use it there enough. So you see how this bit here is on this uh, blue and white line, but Terrell's well behind it, so he's nice and safe. I'll drop in there, strike number one, I move back and he turns it here. I've got the hammer fist, he then turns it again, keeping control of the arm throughout as I go here. The next thing I'm going to do from there is I'm going to be grabbing, turn around this way so you can see it more clearly, and I'm going to be headbutting. For the pads, if I grab his actual body, the head's too close, he haven't got traction, so I'll use his sleeves or his arms as a substitute. And then from there you've got the pull and you've bang, you've got the head book from here. Taking those arms down, I'm going to do that uh, double over hook grip that we talked about. I'm going to roll around from this position to spin him round. He's going to put both pads up and brace it from there, it's fine. So I've got the idea of pushing away to, uh, to finish off. So if we walk through that one more time and we'll keep the line the same. So if we're there, one, two, three, he then brings both pads up, turn, pull. The bang, cover the arms in, spin, brings the arms up from here again. Oh. 
and then I can move away again. You can also go for the eye gouge version for the other version. Again, simply by grabbing it in the pads and squeezing the thumb in. Is that okay? Is that a sufficient video summary that will hopefully help enough that you remember it all? Awesome. <laughs>